Hello everybody and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and Merry Christmas to you, Happy New Year and Happy any other holiday that you're celebrating during this holiday season. And my apologies for making this video just a little bit too late because due to holidays I also had to do some things and couldn't really produce this on time. But anyway, so we're going to be talking about various space news from last week and we're also going to talk about some really cool things happening on the channel as well. So. Let's start with space news number one. This is actually kind of exciting because we have some new pictures from Ceres. Now, this looks like Pluto. This may feel like Pluto, but it's not Pluto. It's not a dwarf planet, a lot closer to us than Pluto. So this is pictures from Ceres that we received from Dawn spacecraft uh, that I've talked about in one of the previous videos. You can actually check it right here. There's the link I posted in the, in the video uh, that shows you uh, all about this particular mission that basically happened... Uh, Sometime earlier this year in March, uh, where we actually uh, got all of these awesome photos from NASA and from uh, the surface of Ceres. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's a pretty exciting dwarf planet to explore. And uh, as you may know, or as you may have heard me say it before, um, Chinese Space Agency is planning to actually land here and bring a rock back to our planet sometime in the future. So it's pretty exciting. And speaking of pictures, here's a really beautiful picture that a person by the name of Justin Majeski captured uh, somewhere in the US, I think it says here, uh, South Lake Tahoe. Um, and he captured this back in June 2015, but this picture has been actually recently posted on space.com. And it's basically this, I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit more. All right, here we go. So the beauty here is just incredible. So you, you get to see the entire Milky Way. And that's basically um, us seeing our own galaxy from sort of from the side. And we're on the outskirts of this galaxy in the outer rim. And basically this picture here makes you really think about how small we are in the universe. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous picture. And speaking of pictures, many uh, people in the US actually captured and posted this and a lot of people were actually freaking out over this and this is basically something that happens quite a lot we just don't really see that often and not not always is captured on film but there was basically a, a meteor uh, that passed by in the sky uh, above somewhere in the US I believe it was actually in uh, west coast so Nevada California and people uh, it says here they had no idea what it is but obviously many people did know what it, what this was basically here here's the video of it and it's a meteor flying across the sky, uh, very similar to the one that passed by uh, uh, two years ago in Russia, but uh, the Russian meteor, meteor was actually a meteorite because it did smack into Earth. This one most likely burned up in the upper atmosphere because it, it does disappear at some point. So I think this is kind of interesting, and I guess uh, it does show you how little we uh, people know about space and about uh, meteors, because a lot of people had no idea what this was. Uh, but if you are following this channel, you should be aware that this was a meteor and nothing uh, to be scared of. And speaking of scary meteors and meteorites, there's actually an asteroid that uh, NASA has been um, trying to keep track of called Apophis. It's, it's actually been in the news before, and Apophis uh, is now in the news again, but this time from the Russian Space Agency. And I think there's actually one scientist specifically who seems to be certain that it's going to possibly... Uh, smack into us in 2036. Now, the the reason I know about this is because someone posted this earlier on Facebook, and there was actually an article from christiantoday.com, and this is actually an interesting source to get this from, but it says this, giant asteroid could hit and destroy Earth on April 13th, 2036, Russian U.S. scientists warn. Uh, no. Uh, the reason why this is no is because it would, even if it hits us, it's not going to destroy Earth. Uh, this particular, it, it doesn't look like this. It, it, it's not nearly as big as this. It's actually only about, uh, it's basically the size of uh, three football fields, so it's maybe anywhere between 200 and 300 meters or uh, 600 to about 1,000 feet. Um, and the object would obviously cause a lot of damage and possibly uh, uh, cause a lot of destruction. But here's the thing. Even if it hits us, it will probably hit uh, the water. So maybe there will be a, a small tsunami that will be caused by this explosion. But it's not going to destroy Earth and it may cause some damage. But we've had tsunamis before and uh, as much as we, they're scary and really dangerous, they're not going to destroy the whole planet. Um, and the other thing is that uh, it's still very unlikely to hit us. Uh, NASA has been calculating and recalculating the chances. And uh, according to NASA, as of now, uh, the chance is very slim. Hopefully this will not keep you awake at night, uh, making you worry and uh, about this possible catastrophe. Uh, but you know what? Uh, nothing to worry about. Anyway, moving on. The most exciting news from uh, the last week was, of course, the actual successful landing of space 
X Falcon 9 rocket. And this is actually interesting. What this picture shows you is the, uh, the comparison between the Blue Origins New Shepard rocket, which I talked about in a previous week, where the rocket actually launched straight up and was able to land itself uh, very, very nicely um, straight uh, on the ground. But this is what Space, uh, SpaceX Falcon 9's uh, path, um, path was. So basically, it does do it does a gravity turn right here. It, uh, it actually did reach space and then it turned around, uh, blasted its engines backwards, returned back to Earth and then used its engine to land on the, on the land uh, completely. Now, the reason I'm, I'm actually comparing this is because you may have seen uh, a a Twitter post by Jeff Bezos, who's basically the uh, CEO of the other company called Blue Origin, which is yet another um, private space agency. And here he basically said, congratulations to SpaceX on the Lennon Falcon's suborbital booster stage. Welcome to the club. Now, this part is really pissed people off because he basically said that we were the first to land our rocket um, vertically. And so welcome to the club. He's actually not right for so many reasons. Uh, SpaceX actually did have a very similar launch a few years ago where they, they actually landed their uh, rocket vertically, just didn't really have as much... Uh, effect in um, in the press and uh, his rocket basically landed vertically. He essentially just launched it up and he didn't even go that high. He actually just went to about four kilometers and then landed back on Earth. SpaceX Falcon 9 did the whole thing. So it, it was a much, much more complex maneuver and they landed it safely. Uh, specifically, it was actually they landed on, on a penny. Uh, that's how precise it was. And I think uh, the whole discussion between uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk actually best is, is best demonstrated by this video from this Chinese agency that shows you their battle and how they actually are trying to compete with each other. Uh, it's a video worth watching. It's kind of funny. I'm going to post this in the description below. And if you want to check out some of the other SpaceX videos specifically uh, related to this launch, uh, they're all on SpaceX YouTube channel. You can actually see the entire process and even watch the uh, launch from their actual camera on, um, on the SpaceX rocket, which is pretty awesome. And lastly, uh, there's a really interesting post by uh, space.com where they basically have top five space questions of 2015 with answers. And it's a really interesting read. I'm not going to spoil them for you because uh, it's kind of more interesting if you read them. But uh, they do answer questions like, is the light from a supernova dangerous? Or um, is the alien invasion possible? So it's something that uh, you may want to read uh, by yourself by going through this article that I posted in the description. And do consider reading it because a lot of these questions are very, very common and they do give a very, very unique and very specific answer from actual um, space scientists. And similar to this, there's actually another article from BBC this time uh, that answers another question. What could possibly go wrong on a spacewalk? Now, this was really interesting because it basically gives you all of the possible uh, horrible scenarios of what can go wrong when you're in space doing an EVA and then basically you're there by yourself all alone. Uh, there's some really cool, really awesome, specifically this one, uh, really awesome uh, explanations on what can go wrong in space. Uh, a lot more things that you, you can imagine, obviously. Anyway, so that's basically it for space news for the last week. And once again, my apologies for posting this video just a little bit too late to make this a weekend with what the math. This was more of a review from last week and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Anyway, so this week on the channel, we're going to be continuing some of the Star Wars videos. I'm going to be posting more Star Wars uh, universe related videos that explain uh, all kinds of things about the Star Wars universe. And this is, of course, because The Force Awakens is out. And I'm going to make sure not to spoil anything from The Force Awakens for those of you who haven't seen the movie yet. But you know what? Nevertheless, I think it's worth uh, watching because the movie is absolutely amazing. Uh, maybe sometime in the future, I'm also going to include uh, The Force Awakens planets and other uh, little tidbits of information that have been added to the Star Wars uh, universe. And as you may know, uh, because of the new uh, Disney ownership, uh, a lot of the previous Star Wars universe things from the expanded universe have actually been uh, considered to be not true anymore. So a lot of the things that many of you, many Star Wars fans actually uh, took for granted is no longer true. So uh, the new trilogy is going to be very unpredictable. We don't really know what's going to happen. And it's kind of exciting because um, a lot of the things that we thought we knew are no longer true. But the videos I'm going to be making are going to be based on the movies only and with some additional extended universe stuff that will explain to you how the Star Wars universe works and what it's all about. And uh, basically, we'll, we're going to focus on the science part. So I'm going to explain to you of various solar systems, uh, various uh, scientific concepts like possibly the lightsaber and the faster than light travel in the Star Wars universe. 
And we're also going to talk a little bit about the history in Star Wars Universe because it's a very, 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 very big history. Specifically, it actually spans something like 40,000 years uh, from the day of the first Jedi to the day that we see in The Force Awakens. But of course, it's not only going to be Star Wars, there's going to be other videos related to space and uh, space-related sciences. And I know many of you have asked for another planet-based related video, and it's actually being worked on right now. Uh, it's a lot more difficult than I imagined it would be, uh, but it's coming. It's coming, and you'll get to experience it very soon. Anyway, thank you for watching, and Happy New Year to all of you once again, and I'll see you in the next year, and also in the next video. Thank you, game you later, and bye-bye.